Guardians talk yeah. after a stellar debut yesterday for Logan Allen. That was nice. It was a good end to the weekend from what's – the Guardians are not playing particularly good baseball right now. And it's unfortunate because their schedule is getting a lot tougher. Really, the rest of the all – you know, after the series with the Rockies, they stink uh, here in Cleveland. But uh, it was a bright spot. Jason, we talked a lot about, you know, getting the kids up from the minors. This – Guardians team feels weird right now. They're pitching – this is the least comfortable I've been with the Guardians slash Indians pitching maybe in a decade. I mean, Shane Bieber has not been lights out. The rest of their rotation is completely unreliable. Mm-hmm. Um, the bullpen, Karen Jack, you don't know what you're getting from gaming. I don't trust him at all. Do you? No. Right? No, I don't know. Um, so the bullpen, you know, even Class A has not been lights out like last year. Um, so there's a lot of spots where you're like kind of holding your breath, but it was great to see Logan Allen against, you know, the Marlins don't have a great lineup, but it's not a bad lineup. They're playing decently and they scored a bunch of runs against the guardians on Saturday. I thought Logan Allen, I didn't get to see the whole game. Unfortunately, this was a crazy weekend for me, but when I did what I did see and then watching back the highlights after he was very impressive. Yeah, he was, uh, he's not in their top tier as impressive as he was, right? He's not even considered their top tier of pitching right. prospect. He doesn't throw as hard as some of these other guys. He doesn't right. throw as hard as Bybee and Williams and Espino for one start. I mean, Espino's it was exactly, hurt again. Espino's way. hurt again. Yeah. It's we're not, not looking good. We're not seeing him this year. It's not looking good for no. him. But um, I want to see more out of, out of Logan Allen. And Tito did yeah. say this is the first in a wave. Yeah. So I do. That Let's was encouraging up. to me. I yeah. do think that we are going to see Bybee probably if I had it's strictly a guess soon Memorial Day I think, think prob- that long yeah I, like I do sooner I think a Memorial Day started June his he third start in AAA wasn't very good he, his first no, two were he, great yeah he got knocked around a little bit he walked five guys in that last start uh, so. Battenfield has held his own like I don't yeah, have any faith right. I don't have any faith yeah. in him but he hasn't blown up to this point right they did move Gaddis out of the rotation that was good to see yeah. um and and yeah I mean now let's get Bybee up Williams I think will probably get promoted to AAA soon and then he's one step away, so maybe July, Gavin Williams comes up. We know the Guardians are not going to panic. No. They never do. They're cool as a cucumber in that front office. They're not going to rush a guy they feel is not quite ready. And all of a sudden, it could be June, and maybe your rotation is Bieber, Bybee, McKenzie, and Allen, and your fi- and then Quantrill's your fifth guy, and you're feeling a lot better. Yeah, but you're putting – But right now, it's very uneven yeah. in the pitching staff. And you're going to be putting a lot of faith in untested guys. Right. That's true. And that's yeah. a little concerning as well. But, I mean, I don't know what the alternative there is. There is none. I mean and, – And, you know, I was talking to Zach about it. We wrote a piece on The Athletic last week or the week before about this. You know, I remember back a couple of years ago, they had Carlos Gonzalez batting cleanup and Hanley Ramirez in the lineup. And right. the lineup in April looked vastly different oh, yeah. than the lineup in September. They're very, it very well could be the same this year where you have – Plesak and, and Savali in April and by October, August, September, yeah. the lineup looks or the rotation looks vastly different than it does. Yeah. The I, I'm kind of done with Plesak. I mean, you got no choice. I, I, I think he'd be a great reliever. Like I, I just said that on my podcast the other day. Yeah. Let's see what he's got for an inning or two. Absolutely. I think if they start calling, if McKenzie gets healthy and Allen establishes himself and then eventually Bybee does too. Let's see what he's got in the pen. Maybe you find something a there. A lot of these failed. Three years in a row now. I mean, right. it's still early this year. But if he doesn't turn it around as a starter, it's three years in a row he hasn't pitched well. Let's see what he's got in the bullpen. A lot of failed starters turn into terrific relievers. Right. Mm-hmm. You can cut down on your pitches. You can get by with two pitches. You know, yeah. throw two pitches. You can throw. You can be a reliever and get yeah. an inning or two out of just throwing two pitches. And I like his athleticism. I like his competitiveness. Like, he, he's got a ton of confidence in himself. Where yeah. it comes from sometimes, whatever. Right. But he's got a lot of confidence. I don't think he'd be scared of the moment of no. pitching high leverage late innings. I think he'd be great as a reliever. Yeah, reliever. I think that's the move for him. Uh, Hentges is coming back soon. Yes. That'll be a big lift, hopefully, to the yeah. bullpen. But it, the right lefty. now, the, the pitching is – there's less guys you trust than you have in a while. How are you feeling about the Guardians? Well, I was happy to see some uh, – pitching is a question. Yeah. Right? But you have all this talent in the, in, in the minor leagues. Yeah. Right. At some point, I'm, I'm a person to say, let me see what you got. Yeah, right. All right. The other thing is, I was happy to see Bell hitting the ball. Yeah. That was that. Another I mean, home run. When yesterday. they went back to back yesterday, I was like, yeah. okay. And I Jose's said, off to a slow start in terms of I power, said, too. I, I said, so maybe this is the start of that getting started. Again. Yeah. And this is a franchise that usually starts slow. They Always. Almost April, always. April's never great. Yeah. But we just saw the standings up there. 
The no division one's gonna, No one's going to run away with this division. The Twins are 12 and 10. And I don't. The White Sox are like 8 and 17. I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on in Chicago. They, to me, they have the most talented roster in the division, and they can never put it together. They're, and, and it was easy to blame La Russa, as yes. I did and yes. others did. And I did too. And they're still a mess. Now it's early. Mm-hmm. Uh, they could turn it around too. They've I, had I, some injuries too. I, I think part of it with the White Sox is, and this gets very overlooked, especially if you're not watching the team every day. They're bad defensively. They got a lot of guys round peg in a square hole. Yeah. Like, or, or is it square peg in a round hole? Yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, it seems like they're a team of DHs. And for whatever reason, they've had bad chemistry. I, I think they need to trade some of their guys. I mean, Anderson's been hurt. Yeah. Uh, Lance Lynn's been awful. Right. Some of the guys that Giolito, I think, had one good start. He's right, been right, terrible. Right. Uh, so a lot of guys Kopech's that they. not been good. Kopech has not been good. No. So guys that you would re- expect to be carry a heavy yeah. load for them, he'd either been hurt or ineffective. It is early. Yeah. It's April. Royals but, and Tigers stink. But we say the same thing about the White Sox every yeah. year. And yeah, the Royals and Tigers right. stink. So nobody's running away with this division. The Guardian schedule is getting much. The, the unfortunate thing is they've been playing bad teams yeah. and they mm-hmm. haven't won that much. Because yeah. the Nat, you know, to play a stretch, Nationals, Tigers, A's, A's, Marlins. I mean, these are some. Uh, well, Marlins aren't that bad. They're not Nationals, Tigers, A's bad. Right. They're, you know, and they've actually played all right. Uh, and now they're playing Colorado. They're awful too. Yeah. So you got to you know take advantage, but the schedule is going to get tougher. I still think the Guardians are going to win this division. The Twins are not running away with anything. I don't think they're that good, and I trust that the Guardians will figure it out and even out. But right now they're not playing particularly good baseball. Yeah, are you worried about Bieber at all? He's not yeah, been very good lately. I've been worried about Bieber since he started throwing ninety one, ninety two. Yeah. Like it's it's a concern, and mm. you don't see elite pitchers. No. Well, that 91. throw that soft anymore. I mean, it sounds crazy to say because 92 used to be great. Right. But anymore, it's it's no. not. And there's just, it doesn't leave you m- much room for, for error when you're throwing 91, 92. And, he's, yeah. and I've stopped talking about it because he na- he's navigated it well. Right. He's done a good job. But it's always a concern. Yeah. And, and I, you know, this is last year in Cleveland. I think they oh. trade him after the season. Yeah. And you just hope that he can continue getting guys out. Right. Hey, this is a question, and I don't know, and I just want to remind everyone real quick, the Lunch Hour deals with Cleveland Sports Show, sponsored by Call of Grace and the official NASCAR team of Northeast Ohio. As someone who wasn't as dialed into the Guardians before I moved here, how fast did Bieber throw it at one point? Oh, he was 97, 98. Yeah. And was there an arm injury or just? The sticky stuff. When they cracked ah. on on the sticky stuff. It, it, and there was a shoulder injury in there as well. He had an injury too, yes. Yeah, so whether, you know, whatever you want it to be, whatever you want to blame it on yeah. the shoulder injury or the, or the he's stuff. been not that start against the A's wasn't good like that's the one of the, just a horrible lineup and I just don't like the way he's pitching and I'm not going to panic over no him. I'm not he's panicking. still he's He'll, still going to get guys out yeah uh but you wonder like McKenzie he's not coming back now to Memorial Day ish right around there they've moved him to 60 he'd be back better well that, yeah. Tito was at it because it, it seemed like he was progressing quickly. Right. And Verlander has the same injury, and Justin's right. going to pitch for the Mets here in a week. Yeah. And then when they moved him to the 60, McKenzie, it just seemed like, wow, I thought he was a lot closer than that. Right. Mm. And I asked Tito about it when they brought up uh, somebody else. I can't remember now. And he said, no, like, they had it charted out. If everything went perfectly, Tristan would have been ready maybe a day or two earlier than the 60 day, but that was it. Yeah. He said, we're not going to mess with Tristan when he's ready. We're going to put, we we wouldn't have put him on the 60 if he would have been back in 40. And they're smart. They're smart to not panic. Right. You know, they don't, you know, there's nothing worth, you're not full. It's not like you're in the American League East where the fifth place team is over 500. Right. You know, so you can be patient here and, you know, we'll see. I I wonder if they would consider, because it's minimum salary, bringing Madison Bumgarner in. I, somebody mm. will. I, he's been awful. Yeah. And I don't know if he's got – he's young enough. Like, he, he, in my mind, I was like, oh, maybe he's 35, 36. He's only like 31, 32. Well, if there's an organization that can sprinkle its switchcraft. That's what I'm saying. That can there's sprinkle, no risk. Yeah. You're paying him elite. You're paying him, what, 600000 Yeah. Yeah, they could, they could invoke him into their cult and – Sprinkle I would do witchcraft it. on his arm and get him. <laughs> I bring him in. He's bring him to their cult. <laughs> it's incredible <laughs> what they cult. do. With their yeah, it's crazy. I don't know how they do it. Right? You Wouldn't could. you bring him in? Like, what's the what's unless you? I mean, you know, maybe you bring him in for a workout and kick the tires yeah. on it and see. And maybe they would or have. Yeah. You know, they're, and again, he's been since going to Arizona. He's been terrible, and horrendous. this year he's been just mm-hmm. atrocious. So he, might, he very well could. Just he be might shot. be shot. Some yeah. guys are shot earlier than others. Yeah. I got a Go question ahead. real quick, and this is unguardians related, but on, on Bumgarner. Yeah. Uh, Clayton Kershaw won his 200th game mm. over the weekend, yeah. and it feels like yeah, Kershaw has been around forever. 
Yeah. For and he just got to that 200 win plateau. Do you think we'll ever no. see a guy get to 300 wins again? No, no. not even close. Mm. So what Verlander's the closest. He has 244, but Who he's does? also Verlander. Verlander. But yeah, he's he, also 39. Yeah, no, he's he's. <laughs> We're never going to see. It's first of all, the wins don't matter. They they are not indicative of anything really at all. Yeah. Um, it's a useless stat. But the pitchers care about it though. Of course they do. They do. They want to get wins, but guys don't pitch a lot enough innings. The you know bullpens so, have become so good and so special. I mean, right. back when guys were winning three hundred games, bullpens stunk. I remember there was a story. I wish I'm going to butcher this. Yeah. I think Corrales was the manager or something. <sighs> And he went out to the mound. I don't remember who the starter was. And I think Camacho was warming up in the bullpen. And he said, look out there. Yeah. You really want me to bring him in? Like, <laughs> pull it together. <laughs> even, and that was way ago. But, yeah. but like, even <laughs> when you and I were kids, and I'm a little older than you, you'd have, like, one good reliever. Yeah. Maybe two. Maybe. Then I remember, remember the year the Reds had the th- had, had Norm Charlton, Charlton, Dibble, and Myers. And Myers. Myers. And it was the like, oh, my boys. God, three the, good relievers. Yep. Game was over in the seventh And the inning. closers – who at those days we called them firemen would pitch two, three innings. Yeah. Gossage and Lee Smith and all Eckersley back in the day. Right. So, so starters would like, if you didn't go a complete game, it was a failure to some degree. Well, that's not the case anymore. N- guys rarely pitch more than five, six innings these days. Guys are getting pulled at 85 pitches, 88, right. 90 pitches, yeah. four and two thirds. Right. Not even qualifying it doesn't even for matter. Wins. You know, uh, by the way, did, did you guys see over the weekend, Cubs pitcher Drew Smiley, how he lost yes. his first game. Terrible. Yes. He had a perfect game. Oh, I saw that. Going into the eighth inning. And the fir- for those who didn't Jan see it. Gomes. The first batter of the hit, like a, li- a ground ball, a little nubber. And Jan- both Jan Gomes and Smiley were trying to get the ball. At the last second, Gomes tried to get out of the way and basically tackled. No, tackled Gomes didn't try. Ball. I don't even know why Gomes got into it because the pitcher had, his, had, had the right to the ball. He was about to get it. Uh, One of them should have called it. Yeah, uh, you know. I think it's it's hard for me to put blame. No, on, it was, on what are you going to do? I don't, Especially in that instance. The yeah. announcers um, were saying the Cubs announcers. I, you know, I was watching on the Cubs station. Uh, Boog Shambi used to be on ESPN. Those Cubs games with Jim Deshays. And by the way, Joe Girardi's now one of the Cubs analysts. He's awesome. Oh, really? On the broadcast, he's fantastic. But they were trying to convince everybody that they wouldn't have gotten the out. I was like, no. I think they would have gotten I me don't out. Know. I mean, I have no, I, I don't watch the Cubs. Yeah. I have no idea what kind of fielder Smiley is. I trust the catcher more in that situation yeah, to make that I, play than the pitcher. It, the the pitcher's got to, I mean, he's a lefty, so that was. It's a weird know. angle. Like, he's yeah, but the yeah. catcher, either either guy's going to have to do it. It was tough. It wasn't a guaranteed no, out because right. it just was hitting the perfect spot. Because but. Either, either guy's going to have to do a 270 to make the throw to first. Yeah. But depending on which way he's turning. But right. I, I would trust the catcher more than yeah, that. Yeah, that was, that was kind of crazy. Go ahead, Mike. Last thing before we move on, Guardians-wise. Bull, I know you saw the quote from Terry Francona on Josh Naylor. Zach Meisel yes. released it. I'll just give you the numbers real quick. And yeah, he's been awful. Before this weekend series with Miami, yeah. he was 1 for his last 36 and 0 for 15 against lefties in that stretch. He did go 3 for 6 in two games against Miami, which brings up his slump over the last 12 games. Steve, take the graphic full. He's now 4 for his last 42, Ooh. 2 for 17 versus lefties. And he's had nine hitless games in his last 12. It was one for 10 before this uh, weekend series with Miami. Tito says he's going to ride with him. Yeah, for listen, better or worse. Uh, we've debated this before. I'm ready to give up on him as a left hand against lefties. I know you think they, sh- they should. And, and they're obviously going to give him at least a half a season more. If he's still four for 42 in July or yeah. that or same average, yeah. Yeah. they'll make a move. They'll bring a right handed batter right, to right. trade that. But I, I think they're going to give him from now until they the will I, because. Listen, in, in defense of him, in terms of his overall numbers, he is a hot and cold hitter. Oh, yeah. He's a streaky guy. Like, he'll go on a streak where he'll get – he'll catch fire. Yeah. And he'll hit, you know, four home runs in five days, and he'll be great. That's part of baseball. Some guys are like that. Josh Bell's kind of like that a little bit, too. The, the Guardians don't have a ton of streaky hitters. They have more guys that are more consistent. I think one other big story for this weekend is the Stephen Kwan thing. Uh, for those who do you know what I'm talking about here? No. Jason, do you he know? He hasn't been hitting great. No, 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 no. The Instagram post. Oh, no, I don't know mm. about that. I'm looking it up right now. I Wait a second. Heard. Stephen Kwan, and I confirmed with Zach Meisel that this was real because I because a friend of mine brought this up to me. I haven't even talked to Zach. Has nobody talked about this all weekend? So it's not that big a deal, but Stephen Kwan posted on Instagram. Now, I didn't see the original post because he eventually took it down. 
Stephen Kwan apparently posted on Instagram a, like a video of him flipping through some pages of like a, a contract offer from the Guardians. And apparently in this video, either he, I can't remember if he said it or it was written down and people happened to see it where he kind of took a shot at my, like they basically offered him the same deal that they offered Miles Straw. And he was like, well, I'm a lot better than Miles Straw. And he was and, and he posted on Instagram that he took it down two hours later. A friend of mine brought this up to me and I hadn't seen anything about it. I thought, oh, maybe this is not legit. But then I texted Zach Meisel and he said, yeah, this is legit. And, but I obviously got no play over the weekend because nobody else knows what I'm talking about. Well, no. It's not on his Instagram right now. If he, no, he, if took it was it down. Up, he took it down. Well, I do think that they made an offer that he didn't really like. Right. That he was insulted by. But it was weird that he took a sh- apparently took a shot at Straw in this. Well, what did he say about great. Straw? I, I can't remember now exactly what he said. I kind of forgot about it. Then we were talking about the Guardians. And I was like, oh, I got to mention this real quick. See if you can find that out. I might. Uh, um, I'm doing some research. Yeah. You know, my friend texted me what he said so I can. I can look up his. He said it on the Instagram. I don't remember if he said it. Let me let me let me bring up my friends because uh, he originally sent me this post, and I and then I confirmed it with uh, with Zach just to make sure. Quan isn't hitting as well as he has yeah. as he did last year. I'm not ready to say I'm concerned about it. I think his style plays. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. He said also stating uh, he posted this on Instagram. This is a picture. I'll show you, Jason. You got you know. This is a picture of like the details. Yeah, it's hard to see, but it's a picture of the details of the contract they offered him apparently. And then he's also stating it's similar to what they gave Straw, and says he's better than Quan in all facets of the game. Yeah, or Quan's better than him in all facets of the game. So that's well, that's not something good they got to deal with in the locker room. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure the Guardians don't like the fact that he's airing the contract. No, not at all. Publicly, and it's a be- they should have offered him a better deal than they offered Straw. Yes. He's a much better hitter than Straw is. Mm-hmm. By but, the way, Straw's been good. I give him credit. Mm-hmm. He's been good. But, he's been uh, better than Quan this year. Yes, but offensively. Quan, yes. Quan also doesn't have, I mean, not that Straw has a massive track record, but Quan's only been in the majors for one year. Right. So, but he did win a gold glove. Yes. So. Good base runner. I don't know. It was weird. It seemed like I don't know Quan, obviously, at all, but it seemed out of character for him, for yeah. him to be. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's why I thought maybe this was like a fake or something, but when Zach confirmed it, I was like, wow. I I was I totally missed it. I yeah, didn't I didn't get any traction because it's I not see that it big a deal. But I will have to talk to Zach again, or maybe you'll talk to Zach again and see what what he has to say. Because I haven't texted Zach since it was during the game. I think it was Saturday. I don't know. My weekend is so jumbled. I don't know when everything took place. But and before we move on, we do have a super chat from our guy Donnie M that yeah. he wants to ask Jason. Uh, Jason, would it be better to trade Bieber now or later? And what do you think the return is for the Guardians' ace? Well, the Guardians seem to get more later. than anyone else in terms of value when you look at the Frankie trade and what they got for Lindor to get Jimenez and Rosario. I don't think they're trading them now. Like, they're trying to win a pennant. No, no. But I do think – I mean, so th- I mean, that's that's the ultimate question is it's all about postseasons. And if you trade them now, you get a team gets two postseasons, and that inherently increases the value that you'll get on right. the return. But when you're trying to contend and you're trying to win right now, I did think I did think maybe last year because no one thought that the year was going to go the way that it did. I thought maybe last year they would trade him and get a haul back for him. But now I think you got to ride this out, play this out for this season, try and see how far this team can go, and then you be realistic about where you're yeah. at with things in well, the off season. Well, and, well, and you'll get. I mean, what are you going to get? You're going to get. You'll get a couple prospects back for him. Uh, but you know, I don't know. You're not going to get because he's only got one year left. You're not going to get the number one guy in someone's organization probably, but probably something similar to the Clevenger trade from the Padres where they got like six yeah. or seven guys. But they traded Clevenger and Bauer both during seasons where they were trying to win. Mm-hmm. Now, they Bieber's did, better, but Bieber's, and they had deeper pitching at the time. Yeah, and Bauer Bieber's was a Bieber's lunatic. Shane's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, different story. Clev yeah. had a lot more off-field issues. Yes, clearly. So, yeah. there's, there's, it's a different – but you're right. They, yeah. They did, but I don't think that's going to yeah, happen. I either. agree. What, right. was, what was the attendance yesterday? Six. What? Six thousand. No I, no, I meant six. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. <laughs> it was cold. Wasn't yeah, it was right? cold. I don't. Know what it was. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't know. Know. I drove in for the Cavs game. You know, we yeah. broadcast out the studio. Right. And then uh, it, was, saw, I mean, it was bad weather. It's you know not like the it was, it was more people fans. than I thought. Oh, okay. It was more people than I thought. We, we were actually downtown for a cheer competition. My daughter had a cheer competition. You had a big yeah, weekend, haven't you? I was yeah. all over the place. That's why I missed the Quan thing. Yeah. And we were at the convention center and. I left early to go home so I could watch a Cavs game, and my wife stayed for the awards presentation. I told her, 
to go past the studio here and take Lakeside home. I said, there's yeah. a Guardians game. I'm like, well, traffic's probably not going to be that big of a deal yeah. on East 9th, but uh, – yeah, it's rarely a big deal traffic for yeah. the Guardians game. Unfortunately. Yeah. According yeah, to ESPN's attendance tracker, there was 12,600 people there, 36% oh, attendance. Mm. That was the